Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Mark from Solar Games and today we're gonna to talk about Hasbro again. So at this point, it's kind of like a joke on my channel where you know, a lot of my viewers don't even read or watch or listen to the quarterly or annual reports from Hasbro directly. They're watching my video, mostly post those uh, earnings calls to kind of get the download on what's happening at Hasbro. And so as you know, if you've been following the channel for a long time, actually, I think one of my first videos I've ever made that had quite a bit of views after all the box opening stuff I was doing before um, was focused on this whole Hasbro shenanigans and their earnings call. But basically, if you've been following the channel for a while, right, you know my opinions on Hasbro. I basically, look, I love Magic the Gathering. I think it's a great game. I still, even though I don't play it as much as I used to, I still definitely feel like it's a cool game. I like all the mechanics, all the pieces. That's established and that's true. Now, the key is I think the management and I think the way that the company is being run, I think the way that products are being pushed further, further out, meaning you know out of the, the, the company, way before it's ready, way before any QC, QA can actually do real work on them, that's the core problem. In addition, the increase in prices to just basically so that Hasbro as a company who's reporting to shareholders myself included, um, are trying to basically make sure that they're telling the story that they're making a lot of money. That's also driving some of this problem, right? So again, I love the game. I hate how it's being run. Today's video, we're going to talk about like what's happening again at Hasbro, all the shadiness. So the headline that we're all going to talk about, everyone's already seen it by now, is that Hasbro has laid off over a thousand employees recently, right? Again, another one of these layoffs, another one of these layoffs right in Christmas time. And I mean, just, just imagine if you're one of these guys, you go to work, you're super into it, you're making toys, you know, you love whatever, right? All this magic of Christmas, delivering toys. You feel like you're an elf at, you know, in the North Pole for Santa. And then Santa says, get the fuck out of my store, right? Fires you on the spot. That's how it feels. I mean, these guys, they're guys and gals, okay? Are, their job is to deliver happiness to kids and they're making toys. This is the season. If any season, this should be the season that you know Hasbro actually rakes in money. But obviously, most people do their shopping in November, so there's you know a lot, a lot of last minute. I guess there's you know what that's not true, right? I do shopping in November, but I'm sure there's a lot of last minute gift giving, gift buying stuff that happens in December for Christmas. Of course, all the you know post Christmas return and then with that credit at the store go buy something else type of thing still happens. Anywho. Toys are doing terrible. I mean, basically, if you if you want to know what's happening, like Hasbro has not made a lot of money on the toy segment. That segment has been losing money, right? We've talked about this in the earnings report. Hasbro as a company basically is all um, supported, reinforced, built up, if you will, by Wiz of the Coast. And basically, it's Magic Gathering because Dungeons, Dragons, and their other auxiliary games don't make as much money as Magic the Gathering. That's just the facts. There's really no dis dispute of this, right? Obviously, when I say Magic, I mean the paper format, the digital formats, MTGO, MTG Arena, etc. right? So that's the reality. Everything else has been losing money, the entertainment business and the toy business. And so for, as far as Hasbro goes, right now the toys aren't doing well, right? And I, I haven't, I'm not really in the market for this kind of stuff, so I don't know, but I have spoken to a couple of my patrons who are collectors of their toys and they've told me like the quality of their toys and action figures have really gone down you know recently in addition to that if these toys are being made and if they're made in large volumes and people aren't buying them they will actually hold you know they cost more to hold it in inventory because they're bigger bulkier than magic cards so in a lot of different ways magic cards is like a very easy way to store wealth and <laughs> And money than over something like toys and action figures. That's just kind of how things are. So, of course, Hasbro ahead of you know quarterly Q4 earnings, which also wraps into their annual earnings call, lays off a thousand, a one hundred employees. And the reason for this is pretty obvious, right? They're gonna come in January, February when they finally do their you know uh, 2023 annual earnings call, whatever. They're gonna call this organizational efficiency or like you know, or organizational excellence, whatever. All this is, is just so that on their, you know, earning statements, because you can't lie about these things that you turn into the IRS, they're going to have to, they want to put in some lines that says, hey, we're reducing costs because cost is too high in those departments and they're not raking in the revenue. So 
it basically makes it look really bad to the investors if they can't make money, but they're spending a ton of money to make money, right? To lose money, essentially. So that's why they're doing this, and that's why they're doing it now. And it just sucks that it's like normal people who have families to go to now suddenly don't have a job. And I mean, in this economy, ahead of potentially a recession, that's really tough as a market. I mean, I guess they could try to get a job at Mattel or something, but I suspect right now the economy is kind of in this weird state, right? A lot of people, because of high interest, don't really want to spend money. And companies and whatever, small businesses aren't really doing startups because, well, borrowing money, like, it's so high. Interest rate is so high, you, you know, it's really not stimulating to uh, start a business, right? Because it's, it's, you're, you're going to owe a lot of money. So basically all that means is, you know, like this is, you know, a couple things, right? Number one, basically we now know Blue Point 2.0, whatever, the, Blueprint 2.0, this whole vision by Chris Cox to like focus the lines isn't working, right? Focus their toy lines, focus their IPs isn't working. Number two, like think about what's happening, right? Out there on the market side, all these vendors who are having Hasbro toys and everything like that, they're losing a ton of money and they're losing more importantly confidence. See, if they have a bad set, if they have a bad toy line, whatever, right? You eat the cost as a vendor, you move forward. The problem is if you continuously have inventory that are like basically toxic, well, they're just gonna cut you out completely, right? So maybe some of the stuff that Hasbro has been doing, they're just not as good. And of course you look across the aisle, you have Barbie, you got like all this other Mattel toys that are doing super well. And so you think like, man, like what am I doing over here partnering with Hasbro when I could be over there partnering with Mattel? That's basically kind of how things are, right? And look, lastly, I wanna bring this back a little bit to Magic. And the thing is this, while Magic is doing pretty well and on, you know, on top line looks really good, what I've noticed is this trend by a lot of LGSs to diversify. There used to be a ton of LGSs that are like 90, 90%, 80%, 70% magic focus and you know other peripheral like Pokemon, whatever, 20, 30%, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! 10% kind of thing like that. Nowadays, I'm seeing more and more stores diversify where magic is becoming 50%, 40% of their store, whereas other games are really encroaching in. And that is not a good sign for, for Magic Gathering and for Wizards of the Coast, right? And maybe, honestly, for us players, it's a really great sign because what that's going to tell, that's a lot of data that we're going to be able to give to Wizards of the Coast to say, guess what? You're not treating stores, you're not treating players, you're not treating your audience, your customers right, and so we're going to leave you. Just this past week, right, I went to a store local to my area and I was doing kind of like a winter bargain sale thing. Obviously, stores around this time usually want to clear toxic inventories off their books so they can get some cash, number one, liquidity for next year so they can buy new sets. But number two, also like, you know, uh, capture the loss so that on their tax statements, they could write these losses off for 2023. It's just kind of like against their, you know, earnings. So it kind of equates out their tax a little bit better. This is why stores do this, by the way. So I went to the store, right? And I'm looking through the, the, the bargain bin area of all the stuff they have. Of course, they got all sorts of, you know, like card games that failed, like Cryptic. <laughs> so, and I remember there was like one commenter on my, on my YouTube uh, that was always telling me how like Cryptic is like going to the moon is the best game ever. Like, all I got to tell you, bro, that Cryptic box is $15. If you want it, I will buy it for you. I'll ship it to you, okay? Comment to me again. I'll buy it for you and I'll ship it to you. I'm pretty sure no one's picked it up. Cryptic Genesis or whatever. And then like, you know, you have like little deck boxes, like things that aren't really, wouldn't, I wouldn't really associate with any like game dying, but there's like some one piece deck boxes, some fab starter decks, you know, I kind of get it, right? Like you have a little extra leftover inventory. And then of course, on one side, there's the, the reason I went to the store was all this Grand Archive stuff. So I picked up all the Grand Archive stuff that's like uh, on clearance. One of the challenges with this store with Grand Archive is that they really weren't hosting any events. I was talking to the the guy who was kind of like doing the, the checkout, the cashier, right? And he was telling me like, yeah, they don't really host a lot of Grand Archive events. Plus all their calendar is super full with Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Pokemon, like One Piece, My Hero Academia, like all the other, you know, games that are already happening. The only day to do things is like on Saturday, but there are also like this giant cafe that has like board games and other things too. So it's really not something that they want to say, okay, every day of the week is reserved for some special game. They do want to have open play as well. So I totally understand it. Grand Archive probably just wasn't for the store. Plus I think their turnout and interest was just like one person. So unless you have somebody who's really dedicated, like who really wants to TO events, who really want to drive a lot of traffic to the store and spend a ton of time doing that, it won't pick up that easily. So I totally get it. But it doesn't matter because I went there, I picked up all the Grand Archive uh, stuff they had basically. I, 
like, I don't know, spent like $1,000 or something. And then, you know, bought basically all the stuff they had le left over with Grand Archive. And of course, I turned the corner, and you, you guys can already see, get, guess where I'm going with this. I turned the corner, and there was just like this giant long table. So one of those, you know, like tables that you fold out, like a folding table, all magic stuff. They had Crimson Vow, in, you know, sorry, Midnight Hunt, Inishra Midnight Hunt collector's boosters, $75 each. They had Dominary Remastered booster boxes, draft boosters for 80 bucks. They had this giant bin of Midnight Hunt uh, draft packs, I think, for like a dollar each. And there was like, you know, uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, uh, SNC, right? Streets of New Capenna, all these different sets. And the thing is like, guys, you gotta remember, Midnight Hunt had really good lands. Streets of New Capenna has really good lands. These sets aren't bad sets, right? But because there's just so much of this stuff and not all the players want it, that's why they're out there for such cheap prices. And that's the crazy part, right? So, you know, people always tell me like, oh, Grand Archive is a small game or this game is a small game. Magic, magic is a huge game. Well, tell me what's happening because this store has a ton of inventory that is not being absorbed by the players even at those prices. That's the reality. And the thing is this, right now, Magic is doing great. Wiz of the Coast and of course Hasbro thinks top line, everything is fine, right? But these things, the things I'm seeing with the long tables of clearance items that the store is trying to get rid of, because you know Amazon's discounting, Wiz of the Coast is discounting, they have over inventory everywhere. These things will matter. The toy business side failing, that's just the precursor. If you will, that is kind of like the, you know, the, the herald for what may happen to magic in about a year or so. Because whatever Wiz of the Coast and Hasbro has been doing for the past year is, has caused this problem. They've overprinted, stores have way too much inventory, they can't dump it, and if every single set is a loser set, who's gonna buy more sets? I recently watched this like uh, Gamma presentation uh, at GAMA. Basically, it's a conference for all the like store owners of you know board games, et cetera, whatever, right? But basically, a gaming company so it's a very large uh, seller of you know magic cards, but other products too. Did a presentation on like what they do, how they sell in TCG player. While there are a lot of facts that really aren't relevant for this video, there was one point that he said that I thought was really funny. He said the only box in standard that's worth money opening, meaning like you open and you don't lose money, is Neon Dynasty. Every single set in current standard. Remember, this is a three-year rotation standard we're talking about here is losing money. Every single set is losing money. That's crazy. I mean, imagine a store. What kind of confidence do you have to go buy like a large amount of Karloff Manor or Ravnica Remastered, right? Or whatever the, the, the next like furry set is gonna be. That's really scary for a lot of stores. And this is why I'm telling you like, you think Magic's doing well now, but with these other games encroaching in, with Magic losing, like margins aren't good on Magic cards, right? They're way better in Pokemon. With Magic losing faith, confidence, the players hating it. In two years, we could be looking at the same situation where Magic is no longer the star child. And look, guys, line, the line can't infinitely go up, right? Magic is re raking in like a billion dollars in revenue every year. Or profit. Revenue, profit. It's like a lot of money, right? And they can't keep doing this forever. So there's a point where this ends. And you know, if the company Hasbro doesn't get better, there's no amount of things that Wizard of the Coast can do to staunch the bleed. That's gonna do for me for this video. Um, I'm Mark from Solar Games. I'll see you next time. Stay frosty.